task inter interdependence uh, is an important area to reflect on for the reflective practitioner in terms of organizational dynamics. Um, it's important to reflect on because uh, as a teacher you need to understand where you fit into the team, um, where you can have more impact or where the impact of your work uh, can actually be affected. And we've seen before uh, how the reflective practitioner can deconstruct the identity of the team into particular categories. This task interdependence becomes very important because uh, as teachers in a school environment we're all dependent on each other for the effectiveness of our work and to support the effectiveness of other people's work. And what the reflective practitioner can consider in terms of their reflective process is how the team and how their role in the team is managing this performance. And so what the reflective practitioner is doing is looking at the levels of task interdependence within the group. And task interdependence can be very high or it can be very low. When task interdependence is high, the team is able to function very cohesively and achieve high levels of performance. We can think of task interdependence as reciprocal. This is where every member of the group is able to talk to every other member of the group. Um, this is known as reciprocal uh, interdependence because every member has access to others. Where task interdependence is quite low, this is where all the members of the group actually communicate, actually interact through some other medium, a resource or some other individual, a resource person. And so there's no direct lines of communication between individual members of the group. In the middle ground, we have sequential interdependence. This is where individual members of the group refer only to certain other members rather than all members. And so a chain is formed of communication through the group. So team composition can have an impact on this interdependence. An effective team is one where people are not only willing but able to communicate directly with every other member in the group. And in this regard, the reflective practitioner can focus on what are known as the five C's of team composition. The first C is cooperating. How are individual members in the team cooperating with other members of the team? The second C is coordinating. How are the, the team members working in a coordinated way, supporting each other, guiding and directing each other? The third C of uh, team composition is communicating. Um, a high level of communication between all team members um, will promote team effectiveness. The fourth C of uh, team composition is known as comforting, or in other words, psychological support. This is uh, how the team is actually managing difficulties, overcoming conflicts, supporting each other through difficult times. And the final C is conflict resolving, how the group is moving from the storming stage of its development into the norming and the performing stage of its development. So team interdependence then depends on a number of factors and the reflective practitioner can try to identify these factors and the extent to which these factors are uh, having an impact, a positive impact on the group. Uh, things like understand, individual understanding of the roles that people take on in the group and also learning to coordinate activities uh, between each other in the group. In the team, therefore, the reflective practitioner um, is looking at uh, his or her own role and um, to the, the extent to which they're, they're reaching the area of reflection and um, uh, move it, uh, uh, how effective the team is in terms of moving forward. And what you have to remember is that you may be reflecting on yourself 
within the group as well as the individual members in the group. Um, both of these need reflection uh, in order to understand the impact of the dynamics uh, on teaching.